What's going on, everyone? It is mailbag time here on the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson answering the questions you guys asked over on our community tab. If you want to be on a future mailbag, super simple stuff. Subscribe, comment your question, and boom, you're on the show. Like two pregnant women is. It sounds like a, a bad TBS show, I think, the last time you guys commented. But appreciate you asking the question of, will Russell Wilson go over or under 35 total touchdowns this season. Also, will Denver make any trades before the season starts? Let's answer the first question. Over or under? You guys are welcome to, by the way, light up the comment section over or under for 35 total touchdowns. Let's go back in time a little bit and check out some of Russell Wilson's top seasons to see if he has attained 35, which he has 40 touchdowns just two seasons ago. So he definitely can do it. I don't know if it's going to happen in year one. With the new new everything, right? I, I 34 would be awesome, all right? But 35, I want to be a homer and just go, sure, why not? But if I actually had a gun to my head, I'd probably take under at least in year one for Russell Wilson. So put me down for a U for under. I know it's some communist stuff right there. Not to go over, but sorry, it's my honest truth. Now, as for whether or not we're going to see any big trades happening before the season starts, I don't see George Payton wheeling and dealing any big trades before training camp or maybe even early into training camp now if an injury happens that would change something but I do think that it probably isn't super likely that he would make a huge blockbuster trade and try to light up you know um, the, the trade world in the NFL because he doesn't have a ton of draft picks to work with I mean look at his five picks right now for 2023 his first, and Seattle, his first and second belong to Seattle. Pair of thirds, that nice trade to move back, picked up the Colts' third-round pick for next season, or this year now, or 2023. Fourth, fifth, and seventh. He's not in a spot where he can be buying and, you know, acquiring a bunch of talent when all he has to work with is two third-round picks to really get anyone all that notable. So I think he's going to hold on to his picks and trust the roster he has assembled for this year. Because after all, it's not a Super Bowl or bust year, right? It's not Tom Brady in his 40s. It's Russell Wilson, 33. You're going to have him for hopefully the, hopefully the next decade. Now, if you think George Payton is crushing it as the Broncos GM, you know what? Fun fact right now. We got a new producer here at Chat Sports, Patrick Seatman. Light it up in the comments section. Congratulating him for joining the show. But he comes over from Minnesota. Big Vikings fan. Just like George Payton. Seeps, did you miss, do you miss Payton? Do you miss Payton? A little bit, yeah, uh-huh. Not, not, Quesi Adolfo Mensa, the new GM in town. We'll see if he can live up to the billing. All right, next question comes in from Elon Volk. If Chubb has, like, zero to seven sacks by the trade deadline, do you think the Broncos will trade him for draft capital, and who will lead the Broncos in sacks? I don't think he's going to get, he's going to get traded midseason. Um, I know, like we just talked about, they don't have a ton of picks, so it could make a little sense. But I think a, a mid-season trade is rather unlikely for two reasons. One reason. Let's say he has zero to seven sacks. What are you getting for the guy? You know what I'm saying? Who's going to trade more than like a fifth for someone on the last year of their contract? That just doesn't really make a ton of sense to me. So that's the reason why, number one, he probably won't get traded. The second reason would be, if he's awesome, why would you trade him? You know what I'm saying? He's kind of in that no-man's land of, if he's awesome and the team sucks, they're not going to Von Miller him and go, you know what, let's send you to a team that's competing. We're in the midst of not a full rebuild, but trying to figure out our identity. They know their identity. It is Russell Wilson and the new regime of Nathaniel Hackett. So I don't see a Chubb trade happening. I'll guess maybe Bradley Chubb does lead the team in sacks or Randy Gregory. We'll see if either of those guys can, guys can play a full season. But, like, look at Bradley Chubb's career, for example, right? Can we get back to that 2018 form? In his last two se three seasons combined, 2019, 2020, and 2021, he's played in nine more games. And despite that, he has fallen off in the sack column, just eight and a half sacks. The injuries, of course, playing a major factor in that. But it's still a bummer to see. So hopefully Chubb can put it together. But I'll let you guys weigh in right now. How many sacks for Chubb this season? Is he going to break his personal record of 12 sacks and try to get to 12 and a half or 13? Or do you think 
this is it's just not meant to be it's not gonna work out maybe you're gonna go single digits and that's probably gonna spell doom for his career in denver uh, as he enters the last year of his contract now let's kind of raise the morale a little bit if you are ready to watch bradley chubb sack patrick mahomes in this chiefs offense that the enemy is just a head case it kind of sounds like from all the reports after the season they don't know how to operate an offense on the goal line. They traded Tyreek Hill away, and Travis Kelsey hopefully will let Father Time catch up to him and not look like the number one leading touchdown receiver since like 2018, whatever the ridiculous stat is. If you hate all the Chiefs facts I just rattled off, subscribe. You'll fit in nicely here. Next question comes in from 4 Chain Ninja De Goat. Which player is your breakout player for the offense or defense? Um. I won't go basic here and say Jerry Judy because that's a little easy. So I'll I'll go on the defensive side of things. What about Draymond Jones? Five and a half sacks a year ago, six and a half before then. Third round pick out of Ohio State, who I think is he's entering the last year of his deal. He's a candidate for one of those midseason, kind of like we saw with uh, Patrick and Sutton last year. He starts balling out, right? If week four six seven eight rolls around and he's already at six or seven sacks almost a sack a game i could see him being a real extension candidate and a breakout candidate for this year eddie martinez has the next question on the show what are the missing pieces to the broncos to complete a star roster i'll go with either one of two spots right tackle if billy turner's actually hurt you know what i mean remember the packers released him because of a failed physical he didn't participate in OTAs or minicamp, and that's fine because all they are OTAs and minicamp. But I'm a little worried at that spot, but I've talked about the linebacker position before, right? And this could be a spot where maybe Peyton watches Griffith and Singleton and Josie Jewell and go, you guys aren't looking maybe like I was hoping you would be going into week one. Maybe he'll look at the free agent market, right? Anthony Hitchens or a bring AJ Johnson back. I, I was hoping Johnson would return over Jewel, but I think the age factor was a huge, um, <coughs> excuse me, decision maker. Uh, Joe Schobert played well for the Steelers last year. We've, we've seen Danny Trevathan in this graphic before. I, I don't see it happening. I don't think Trevathan's playing for anyone this year. Fortunately, injuries just kind of derailed the end of his career in Chicago. So I think this roster is pretty close to set. Something could happen. You see, like, remember last year when Kerry Vincent Jr. got traded to the Eagles? You know, like, that have to happen? Probably not. Like, a Trinity Benson trade. But I think this roster is pretty close to what it's going to look like. How about this? I think we know all 22 starters. All 22 starters are on this roster right now. I'll put it that way. We got a question coming in from All Out Broncos, 1858. Longtime supporter of the show. Appreciate you, my guy. Who will be our leading receiver this year, Sutton or Judy? Can we just take a moment to talk about how much it sucked last year when Cortland Sutton just fell off the face of the earth for the second half of the year, and Jerry Judy just couldn't be the same after returning from the ankle injury? But in terms of leading receiver, I'll go Jerry Judy. 15th overall pick. He should ball out with Russell Wilson. There should be no excuses and I wouldn't say there are excuses. Well, I wouldn't say the excuses are legitimate for Jerry Judy or doubt surrounding him. But I think this is the year Jerry Judy turns some heads. He's a fantasy football type of player and not just, oh, next week he's building something. He's snowballing momentum. He's really going to have a fourth year breakout season. No, year three, Judy balls out. But who do you guys think wide receiver one is? This is an answer, a question that doesn't have a wrong answer. I mean, you could go with door number three, Tim Patrick, if you really wanted to. And I wouldn't say you're crazy. But 10 for Judy or 14 for Sutton? Let me know down below. Question coming in from Xavier Solar Solero. Excuse me. Always appreciate you seeing you in the comment section. Do you think Nathaniel Hackett will have a good season? Yeah. I'm going to be optimistic. You know, I haven't seen him coach a game yet. So I won't be a negative Nancy. But I think we should at least take a look at some history here first year head coaches for the Broncos Fangio started his, his year his first year seven and nine Vance Joseph five and eleven never forget Monday Night Football ESPN and there he is having the time of his life one of the best ESPN 
moments in history outside of just Steve Levy pronouncing Justin Fields dead one time during Monday Night Football. I miss Steve Levy so much. Gary Kubiak, first year, of course, wins the Super Bowl 12-4. and four. John Fox goes 8-8, eight and eight, and Josh McDaniels in one and a half years, 8-8 eight and eight as well. Next question, coming in from Johanta Baxter. If you could add any two past Broncos players in their prime to this current roster to help our Super Bowl dreams, who would it be? He, Baxter's going with Edge with Prime Von Miller and Brian Dawkins uh, to play alongside Simmons because why not? It's a fun question for sure. I agree with you. 2012 Von Miller. You know what I'm saying? 18 and a half sacks in his second season. First team all pro, six force fumbles. Love the idea of adding Von Miller. You don't really need help at Edge, but 18 and a half sacks is way too big of a number to turn down. Just like how you don't really need help at corner. Come on, give me 2006 Champ Bailey when he went off for a league-leading 10 interceptions. The guy was just on a different universe that year. Do you really need another corner? No, you're fine with PS2 and Ronald Darby. So maybe you'd go with like a right tackle because that's actually more of a position of need. Or, you know, another lineman on the defensive side or a linebacker, but... Give me two guys who were the best at their position at their prime. I appreciate everyone for tuning in to today's show. Hope you all have a wonderful 4th of July. Be safe. Enjoy the grill. Enjoy out being outdoors. And I'll see you all later with more Broncos news and rumors. 